Hello everyone and I hope today I'm audible. I mean, yesterday also I was audible but there was some echo and stuff like that I can see in the comments but I hope today it's fine. Um, so yeah, last day of KubeCon. I hope you enjoyed the keynotes. Uh, I was obviously watching them and uh, great keynotes. Uh, congratulations to all the um, winners, community contributors. Uh, that's that's the main point. I think you all should be starting to contribute to the community to reach a level where you can be recognized as a top contributor. And it's not easy. Uh, many people have done that, and you know you can do that as well. So. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sayan Pathak and I am a CNCF ambassador and I work as director of technical evangelism at CIVO. CIVO um, is a cloud native service provider that provides managed Kubernetes based on K3S. So um, that's that's pretty much like a very sweet short intro that I can give. Uh, but there's a booth, uh, if you are in person, there's a booth, SIBO booth with our awesome team uh, that can explain you, uh, you know, all the stuff. You can also go to them or even ask virtually if you have any specific use case or you want to move to SIBO Kubernetes uh, or you have any specific questions regarding SIBO Kubernetes, load balancers, um, object storage and stuff like that. And you have a, a use case in mind, you want to deploy, migrate your workloads, anything that you want to ask, you can ask, our team will be able to help, would be happy to help you actually. Uh, okay, so today we'll be talking all about Acon. So let me start with that. Okay, I'm not able to share my screen. Interesting. I need to rejoin this. So uh, bear with me for a second. Okay, cool. Uh, so now you should be able to see the screen. Um, sorry for the uh, sort of that. And let's get started. And we play that. So application deployment to Kubernetes made easy using Acorn. Uh, that's what we'll be discussing about today. Um, and this is about me. You can, I already told you. So where we are. So in terms of um, application sites, uh, every stage have their own every stage had their own challenges so we started off with monolithics um, and then we went to microservices then we went to containers then we went to kubernetes and then we have managed kubernetes like sibo kubernetes and we also have rancher and Portina to manage multiple kubernetes clusters uh, so basically the problems have changed over the years. Like we were not happy with Monolith, so we have microservices that, you know, with all the advantages of API driven architecture, of uh, having uh, to, you know, having the freedom to have any uh, programming language choice, writing your application, uh, then containerizing it because you want to scale that out, and then a container orchestrate because it is difficult to manage single containers uh, in different environments when you have to scale uh, and then manage Kubernetes because Kubernetes setup itself was hard, then HA setup is hard and the day two operations are hard. So why not leave um, that to the service providers like SIBO? Uh, and then now the challenge comes where you have the Kubernetes clusters. We have discussed like uh, yeah, day before yesterday, we discussed about Kubernetes. Uh, we deployed a SIBO Kubernetes cluster, we deployed applications so yesterday. We deployed Arbo CD and then we deployed an application uh, to that using some manifest files, if you have seen, seen over there. Uh, but as a developer, do I care? As a developer, uh, we should not care. As a developer, uh, people should just be focusing on developing their application and then deploying them, that to Kubernetes. So the, there's, a, there's a gap between developer knowing the aspects of Kubernetes. For a system administrator, for SRE, for Kubernetes engineer, it's fine. They can have the knowledge of Kubernetes, but for as a developer, they should be only focusing on uh, like 
why should they care about where their application is getting deployed to in the first place? So if it's getting deployed to Kubernetes, it's fine. They should not be worrying too much about learning all the core concepts like pods, deployment, replica, setting, ingress, ingress controller, certificate management, cert manager, uh, you know, load balancer, services. They should not be taking all those things into consideration. They should only be focusing on developing the app. So that's the problem right now. Uh, application um, to production. Uh, also, there are different stages like you have development, then you have production, how you can maintain a single workflow uh, with, a, with kind of a single file from development to production. So where Acon fits, um, basically Acon lets you deploy the code to Dev test fraud environment within Kubernetes using a single file called Acon file. So if you are familiar with the concepts of Docker, uh, you might be you might have heard about Docker file. Uh, on on the same principles, like you might also see some similarities between Docker Compose and Acon file. But on the same principles, Acon file is built for the application deployment to Kubernetes. <coughs> so what is Acon? Acon lets you deploy uh, to production uh, and in a simplified manner. Uh, you don't need to learn the complex YAML file, so you actually don't have to create any YAML file when I will show you the Acon file, the minimalist Acon file to deploy an HTTPS application to Kubernetes without dealing with certificates, ingress controller, ingress service, uh, deployment, anything like that, it secrets, anything. You will be able to create that in a very minimal way. You'll be amazed to see that. Uh, then you have deployment, stateful set secrets, any Kubernetes objects that can be deployed, like not the system level components, but the components on top of Kubernetes that you need to deploy, you can deploy that using Acon. Uh, by creating the account file. Uh, Auto TLS and encrypted secrets, which came out recently in 0.3.0, uh, a very, very good feature. I would say uh, they have done a pretty, pretty neat job. Uh, when we see it in action, we'll be able to see that how that, how that happens. Uh, easy to develop and deploy workflow. So you can actually easily integrate with your current CI workflows and, you know, uh, uh, change those to have easy end-to-end -end deployment from dev stage prod. So that's how the Acon file looks like. So if you see on the right hand side, um, you, so it's not YAML, uh, it's basically um, a different kind of uh, syntax, which which follows, which is derived from Q language, but not complete functionality of Q language. So it only has the stuff which is important, where you can define many of the things, where you can define the logics, where you can easily read and understand. So I think that's pretty, uh, new, but it solves a lot of challenges and problems. So a con file will be used to describe your application. And you, you can see that you are saying that I need a container. The container name is web. Build that from the current repository. Dot means it will be building that from the current repository's Docker file. And publish the port 8080 to the outside world. That's the only thing that this container this uh, account file is saying and it will automatically create deployment service ingress uh, https everything on its own you don't have to define anything apart from this so um ingress power tls built-in security everything is there and it's econ is not meant for the infra layer like i mentioned earlier as well how it works is uh, econ apps uh, from econ file you create an econ image econ image is a collection of single multiple images so you can have multiple containers or a single container inside the uh, econ image and then it you can send that to oci registry or it can also go to the internal registry if you do not specify any uh, outside registry and then econ runtime will be able to like basically it's the controller the controller will be able to read the app instance objects created by the econ api server that will be uh, creating all the kubernetes objects necessary for your application to be deployed and exposed so that you can access that uh, i hope it made some sense let's dive into the architecture uh, so you have a con CLI. So basically you have your desktop in front of you or laptop or your computer. You will be downloading a con CLI. So when you don't and then you'll be creating a CO Kubernetes cluster. So just understand the steps that you need to do. Create a CO Kubernetes cluster, download the con CLI. Then we'll be creating some account files, which I'll show you. And then you will interact 
using the account CLI with the Kubernetes cluster. First, you will do account install. As soon as you do account install, it will install account components onto the Kubernetes cluster so that it can interact with that. Uh, the three main components would be account API server, account controller, and the build kit pod. Build kit pod comes at a later stage, but account API server is an aggregated API server. So basically, all your interactions from the CLI directly, I mean, basically all the interactions, they go to API server because that's the standard. But API server does nothing. It forwards that request to Econ API server. And then Econ API server takes action based on the command which is there uh, by the aggregation. So I think uh, the API aggregation, the Kate's aggregation concepts have been used very nicely by Darren. Uh, big fan of Darren. Big shout out to Darren as well. Um, and then uh, Econ API server will create the app instance and stuff like that or, or do uh, and there can be various things, various actions that Econ API server will be able to take based on the command that you have filled. Then Econ controller is there. Econ controller will watch the operations and as soon as there is an app instance objects, it will try to, uh, what, not try, it will. Uh, so it will uh, demystify the uh, that app instance objects into the actual Kubernetes object. So it is basically a translation layer. It will be translating uh, the app instance object and deploying, converting that to all the uh, Kubernetes objects that has to be deployed on this particular Kubernetes cluster. Uh, now you can actually build. So when you do a con build, what happens is there is another pod which is created, which has two containers in it, uh, which is called a build kit that will be building your image. You can push that to external registry if you have configured. If not, then there is another container called internal registry where your image will be stored. And in this particular case, the Econ API server will be acting as a proxy. So Econ CLI, Econ API server as a proxy and your build kit pod will be building the image and internal registry will be storing that. So I hope uh, you're able to understand. Scenario. Uh, let's try to understand the actual scenario that we'll be deploying today. So we'll be defining our app instance um, and uh, app structure inside the account file. Uh, now we'll be building that. In that account file, there can be some environment variables that can be defined as arguments that you can pass at runtime or that can be defined for, as secrets that can be defined at runtime or if even if you don't define then Econ is intelligent enough to give you uh, good enough secrets. You can have conditional if else uh, based on environments, based on labelings and all that stuff. Uh, then you can publish a port. There are three types of port. One is internal. That means uh, it is only internal. Uh, one is expose. That means you are exposing a port to be used by other applications, other Econ applications. And one is publish. Publish means you want to ex export it uh, to the outside world, to the consumers. Another scenario can be where you have application, where you have Docker file, Econ file, Econ file building from Docker file and Econ file connecting to a database as well, which is outside like uh, Postgres and stuff like that. And then you do Econ build. Uh, and uh, basically the build can happen on the dev cluster and the run can happen on test dev prod cluster so that you do not deploy anything, like you do not take the build time from the prod clusters. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Another one can be uh, encrypted secret. So that's, again, this came out in 0 .3 .0. Uh, 0.3.0. So for in this example, we have used args password and you can see that uh, in the secrets user password, uh, we have defined data as password and in the containers application image we have defined application and in the environment we are using secret user password pass how we can define that and we can encrypt that as well so you can do a con secret encrypt you can encrypt that uh, you can create that and when you run it you can pass it uh, on the runtime also a con listens to the community which is very good a con always listens to the community so it's <clears throat> That is why in 0 0.2, the eased out more installation so that the concept that you don't need to understand the YAML file stays. Uh, container image listing so that you can, uh, you know, in one go, uh, take the image IDs, push that to another scanning tool, scan that images, get the result. Labels and annotations, which are very important. Sometimes you have to add the labels and the annotations to uh, the manifest as well. Uh, 0 0.3, amazing features. Encrypted secrets, which we just discussed. And the auto TLS 
which is amazing because it gives you HTTPS out of the box without installing any external third party tools like search manager or stuff like that. It uses and it lets them encrypt uh, behind the scenes, um, but it doesn't install any additional component onto your Kubernetes cluster, which is fantastic. Let's dive into the demo so that you can actually understand what, what happens, okay? Where we are, okay. <clears throat> So I already have a Kubernetes cluster created. I can show you that, but since we have only 15 minutes, let's dive, let me dive into the demo. So yesterday we saw deployment of the application. Uh, we'll deploy the same application. So you can see cat deploy hello.yaml. So we create, we basically we create the service, uh, we created a deployment and all those stuffs. Uh, so this is what was created to deploy the application. That is a simple application. But in this particular case, what we are trying to do is I've already installed a con. So you can see kubectl get for siphoning. So a con and the Kubernetes cluster, this is this part is done. So you can see a con system having the con components and then the regular components which are there. So let's clear the screen. Let me show you the econ file. So very simple econ file. I want a web container built from the current directory and publish this particular port. Uh, building, it will be building this uh, Docker file. So it's a Flask application. I'm just copying the current code and exposing as port 8080. Very simple code over here. And uh, yeah, let's let's do a con run. That's it. It will automatically start. Hopefully, yeah, so it has started the build um, and it will be like, you know, going through the Docker file, building from that context and all those stuff. Um, code is same, the repo is same, the Argo CD demo that we used yesterday, the same repo I'm using. I just added another Acon file, uh, which is just a four line, I think four line, four line file, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see what is actually happening. Kubectl get pod siphon A. So, okay, right now nothing is getting created. Okay, I think it created already. And kubectl get pod siphon A, we should be seeing a pod getting created somewhere. Yeah, so you can see a pod is cre uh, created, get ingress siphon A. Pod is created, ingress is created automatically, uh, deployment is created. And service is created as well. So all these components are created by Econ. So we can actually go back, check this HTTPS, <clears throat> and you can see welcome to social best managed Kubernetes service provider. You know that CO Kubernetes. Oh, no, you should be knowing that. Just read that out. CO Kubernetes is the best managed Kubernetes service provider. So you can see <clears throat> it automatically created the ingress, it automatically created all the stuff. And that was required and I didn't do anything, right? So that's the magic that happens. And as a developer, you see from a developer's perspective, what I did, I just created a con file after creating my application, that's it. I didn't create any Kubernetes object. I didn't interacted with Kubernetes. I didn't create ingress, I didn't create anything. And I was given a URL where I can test that. I can see a con, yes. That will give me the list of apps, just like Docker PS. So you can see it is there. Uh, I can also do a con inspect or let me see. A con app. Yeah, that, okay. That gives the list of app. And you can also see the log uh, using the logs command. So these are all the uh, steps which are there. Now, let's try a, a different example. A little bit complex example. So in this particular scenario, what is happening is, so this demo was demoed by actually Darren. Uh, so I've taken his repository itself. Um, so these are the arguments. So these are the arguments that can be changed at runtime. Then you define the containers. So first container is it is building from the context means building from the current directory. Then we again have some environment variables that we are using from the 
args which are above and some we are directly giving like the host and all these stuff probes and the environment so if else condition the exact scenario that i was depicting depends on so it depends on a container so this depends on the container db so uh, the next container is web container simple in the next container and the next container is um, db container so you have env inside that as well you have probe for that you have port for that and you have directory so this directory means it will be creating a persistent volume so you can actually define volume over here as well so this means that it will this directory will be bound to a persistent volume for this particular cluster actually on the runtime you can define the size you can define the storage class if you have not defined the storage class that will take the default storage class and default storage class comes by default with sibo kubernetes which is called sibo volume so you don't have to take care so basically uh, you know half of the automation already comes with sibo kubernetes built into out of the box half of the automation comes with acon built in out of the box so with sibo kubernetes and acon you you get like that 100% stuff you don't have to define anything you just deploy your applications uh, you can leave this because i am not going to demo the second part of this uh, thing but yeah secrets we can see so this is how you define secrets and uh, it can like these are these are like econ can give you the secrets for that and here it is like uh, we have defined the data already so let's see first kubectl get pv we don't have anything yet and now do econ run Again, it will obviously go through all the steps that were there. Oh, sorry, I was on different tab. So yeah, it is building. It will take some time. In the meanwhile, you can just tweet out if you learned anything fancy today. Mm -hmm. Pushing the manifest internal registry. So it is pushing to the internal registry because I haven't specified any external registry over there. Let's see if anything is getting created actually. QCTL get PV or maybe QCTL get namespace. Let's see if any namespace got get created. Okay, we got something. Something has started to create. Uh, kubectl get all in this namespace. So what all has started to create in this particular namespace? Let's check. So the deployments, I told you three pods are there. One is the DB, one is the web, and one is the default. So these are ready. DB one obviously needs persistent volume and it must be getting created. So we can see kubectl get PV. Very soon, the PV will be created. Yes, the PV is created and it is already bound. So kubectl get PVC. Actually, as a developer, you don't need to, uh, you know, focus on these stuff. The namespace, which namespace it was. So with red star. Yes, this is done. So we should be getting a URL, which is this. Oops, where is the URL? It's going too fast. Not letting me copy. So let's go here and check if our app is ready. Yeah, the app is ready. Uh, this is a simple to do app again. Uh, hello and uh, welcome. And I have to record a video. Office hours. So many stuff, right? Office hours will mark as done. So what is happening is this is backed by obviously PV. And what we can do is Acon apps. Very interesting stuff. I, I'll be showing you now. Acon, that, that's the last thing we have five minutes. Hopefully I'm able to show you. Acon PS. We got 
this app right with red star so that was the app we just created let's delete this take on and and see here okay see here focus on this so icon rm so the app is deleted but just to tell you even if the app gets deleted icon do not delete the pv so you can see the pv status will change from bound to released so the pv status changed from bound to released but the pv is still there so means the next time if something happens to the app the pv remains there the storage remains there next thing we can actually start the app again and we'll see the same state so you can see this should be gone this is gone okay now let's do a con run and give the name a con Hopefully, the build uh, will be a bit faster this time. But it might take some time to attach the PVC again, the standard Kubernetes stuff, which will be there because we are attaching the same existing persistent volume to a persistent volume claim, which will be created uh, and the state will be restored. So basically a stateful set, a state of the application will be there. So this is a this is kind of a small real world scenario, not the exact one, but a small real world because it's not HA kind of stuff, which is there. Um, let's wait for some time. Almost. And let's see. Uh, CTL get PV. Three minutes to go. Okay, it's still released. Pound. Yes. So PV is pound. Let's go here. Let's refresh and see. Okay, we might have got changed the URL. Let's wait for a second. Okay, get PV. I hope it did create the other one. Okay, that's the same. QCTL get false spike mail. Still have this not ready. We'll give it a second. Cool. So you can see the exact state that the application was deleted. So the state was there. We, we added this and I didn't enter the next time and it is still there. So, so yeah, that's what Econ is. And there are many other stuffs as well. Like, you know, uh, there are other tooling, which is there in its comparison, uh, which are in the same space. I would say like Waypoint is there. I did a session on that. Um, and then you have uh, dagger is there catch is there so a lot of tools are there and uh, yeah uh, check out sibo navigate and uh, subscribe to all the channels and connect with me everywhere so i will now stop the screen so thank you so much for watching and tuning in to the final day of kubecoin enjoy the rest of the day with amazing talks which are there and uh, please tweet out if anything you learned today about acon and thank you so much again for this particular session. Um, really happy to see you all here and support even when the KubeCon is going on and there are amazing sessions out there. I uh, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the cool demos and uh, yeah, the slides will be available. I can make them available. And uh, the talks, these talks are not recorded. So these are just the live office hours, but uh, you can always go to my YouTube channel, see what YouTube channel for that.